the first thing to check is when you're self-checking trying to progress is proportions. I like to put proportional grid marks out to the side. Um, it looks like if we measure the half, which is your first proportional uh, measurement, which is um, right at the pupils, right? If you go from the bottom of the chin to the crown of the head, right in between is the pupils. Um, it looks like this is pretty darn good. The head overall is going to be about five eyes wide. So if you check that, it's all pretty close. If you check some alignment, one of the things you can align is the pupil with the corner of the mouth. So you can see that the corner of the mouth is a little bit off. This would be variable on certain people. Right, but a generally good rule of good rule of thumb. Um, typically, the ears will line up somewhere around the bottom of the nose, not necessarily right at it. Um, the nose is also typically one eye wide um, down at the bottom, and then usually this gap between the nose and the top of the mouth. Is a little bit smaller than that, um, which means that most likely this distance right here is a bit too, or too small rather. It needs to be a little bit bigger. Let's go into some other stuff besides the proportions, the sort of the more fun stuff. When you have a, a portrait like this, what makes it look flat isn't necessarily that the proportions are off because, you know, you'll encounter drawings that have um, that have proportions that are off but don't but actually don't look flat um, so I'm gonna try to keep and draw to the same sort of size as this one one of the things that I like to do is begin with very kind of general forms and I say forms as opposed to shape and that's because when I draw something that looks like a shape, I'm thinking of it as a dimensional object. I'm already thinking of this as kind of like an eggy form, something that projects out in space. Um, and then from there, I'm going to kind of try to work into how this form connects down into the neck and how that might um, connect into the shoulder and so on. So before I go very far, I want to establish um, the head's connection to the rest of the body. I think that's something that gets looked over, um, winds up missing in a lot of um, in a lot of portraits. The um, next thing that I want to do is kind of just divide the head in half, more or less. One of the craziest things about drawing a head straight on is that this is like the toughest situation um, because there's no. It's like when you're drawing a box, right? If you're drawing a box. If you're drawing it from the front, it looks like a square, right? Maybe, you know, if you draw it as like a wireframe thing, you can kind of see through the box a little bit. Or if it's like a clear box and you get a little bit of sense of depth there. Um, but the second you turn the box to the side, you get a lot more dimension. And if you're looking down on the box, like it's turned a little bit, you get even more dimension. So what you're essentially working with in this sort of frontal portrait situation is analogous to drawing a square from dead on. You've limited your opportunity for depth. So all of your depth has to come from things that project out within that sort of relatively flat situation. What we want to do is find some bone structure, right? I like to work on sort of the eye socket relatively early on. Um, and the eyebrow ridge. I usually make them just kind of straight, at least to start with, and then work on sort of the uh, where the uh, cheekbone is going to go. And then I can kind of work down, work from there. So these are kind of like the smaller forms. So usually from the cheekbone, you have a form that kind of comes down to the chin. 
and from uh, and then you have a form around the top of the eyebrow ridge. You can see this. Um, it's more prominent on some people. So make a little tick mark for the hairline. And what I like to do is kind of put uh, maybe a tick mark for the mouth and a little tick mark for the bottom of the nose, just to give myself some rough guidelines or uh, make a guess as to how well this is going to work. When I begin into the smaller forms, um, I do like to put the eyes in there relatively early on, but I usually put them in as like this weird kind of like spheroid um, thing, not crazy, super accurate to the exact eye that we're dealing with. And then I'll start making like building out a connection to the brow ridge from there in sort of this uh, in a form in a form kind of way. So this nose uh, nose form that this person has is kind of um, a little bit blocky, looks like a little bit small at the bottom and kind of goes from um, large up at the um, at the ridge and um, like between the eyes and narrows as it goes down. So if you think of a nose, it's kind of and you lay it on its side, it's kind of this sort of a form sort of like this, right? Where it's a little boxy and then you put nostrils on it, right? Kind of a silly way to, to explain it, but um, that'll help you kind of draw it when you're working in this sort of situation. And you'll notice that one of the things that's missing from this is kind of the way that the nose integrates down here, right? Usually you see something around there to kind of help anchor you. Um, I'll put a guess as to where the outer parts of the nose are. Since we don't really have a reference, I'm just kind of working on these basic concepts, right? Then we'll shorten up the distance here. And it's looking like this is kind of a relatively uh, thin-lipped person. the slightly larger lower lip. And when I do that sort of thing, I can start on the features, but what I also want to do is work on sort of the structures that are around the mouth and get some muscle structure as it relates. Because the mouth has a bunch of muscles in it and around it um, to help you speak and to give you sort of facial expressions. What you see here, you see a little indicator right here of maybe some of that muscle structure, but all of the rest of the structure is just kind of gone. Um, and when you add a, a couple of ideas, a couple of structures around that, that's gonna um, improve the effectiveness of the, of the portrait um, greatly. And then I'm going to make a guess as to kind of like where the pupils are. And then I can kind of work in, right? Find the corner of the eye. Start to find some more eye anatomy there. I'm going to give them like a kind of rounded appearance. It's easy to make them kind of these little almond forms, and then put a little, put a little pupil and iris in there. And that never really works out well because it's not just not dimensional enough. Then we can work on some of the like skin around the eye and so on, get the eyelid folds and whatnot.
Okay. So that's kind of developing a little bit now. Um, so more or less what we've done is taken a different sort of structural approach. I can still do stuff like at this point add uh, add in ears, sketch those in, and so on, and then you know make sure that my neck is connected from the back of the jaw, and that I'm kind of including some anatomical structure with the sternomastoid there, and you know increasing some doing some work with the hairline and indicating where the hair is going to go. I can lower the hairline if it needs to be lowered. I can indicate where the eyebrows are going to be. Essentially what I'm thinking of in the early stages of this is like what information do I need to get across, right? Um, I don't need to get much information across about like specific contours early on, but I do need to kind of um, establish like uh, what these forms are going to look like. So, you know, the lips, I might kind of come in and make them feel a little bit more rounded, give them a little bit of volume there, indicate some stuff like that. What I can do is take like a brush or something, um, test out what it looks like. And I can start to indicate light. And the first way, the first thing I want to do with light is find the shadow core. And the shadow core is like if you're rendering a sphere, it's the darkest part on the shadow right there where it goes from light to dark, right? So it'll be everything like right there. That's, this would be your shadow core, and it's right at that transition point. Because what happens is light bounces back off surfaces. It'll like come around the ball, hit here, and then turn back. And then that reflected light um, kind of hits on that side, creating this like dark bit of the shadow. So I can capitalize on that, and um, and just very quickly indicate. Um, while being specific, indicate where all these forms are on this person and indicate this idea of a shadow core, right? And I want to be both loose and specific at the same time. And that's kind of a, a tricky thing to get sometimes. So one of the nice things about this sort of portrait is that a lot of this was indicated originally. Um, but I think it kind of missed out down here um, on the neck. The, the shadow core kind of just got lost there. So um, the other thing, too, is that the shadow core is going to extend over into some other areas as well, right? Go ahead and put darken up the irises a little bit because that'll make a little more sense. Cool. So as soon as I put in a shadow core, that immediately increases depth, right? Um, the next thing that'll increase depth a good bit is to do the poster. And what the poster does is all I have to do is anything that's that's on the shadow side, I just put a tone over it, right? And that's gonna help things. Uh, help things along as well, but to really do that, I think I'm gonna need to pick up a little more shadow core, like right here, because um, I kind of messed it up a little bit. Um, I think it'll pick up a little. In this situation, the cheek would pick up a little light. Um, so now I can just kind of more or less indiscriminately just go over, like.
go over the shadow side. And I'm going to kind of go over the shadow core to make sure that it gets kind of like deepened a little bit. So I want that to be distinct from the, the posterior area. And I can still go back and kind of erase things out of here if I need to, but I'm, I find that this is a pretty good workable way of operating. So I think the difference is that, um, you know, it's, it's kind of a thought difference, right? I'm thinking of how do I get the forms across? And, you know, I think this, that this person is kind of thinking more of like, well, how do I get a real accurate portrait, right? Um, I think getting a real accurate portrait is a, a more difficult kind of uh, task and kind of feels insurmountable sometimes when you're approaching it like that. Um, you know, when you just want to kind of get some information across, I think it's a little a little easier to uh, a little easier to stomach. So um, I think the difference is, you know. I'm not working with the same reference, obviously. I'm just kind of working with this portrait as a reference. But I think that what's happened is that, um, you know, I've gone for a different approach for more depth, and that's kind of where my emphasis is. And I'm using a lot of mental information to help me with that. 